Okay, we all know that time trial aero helmets are designed to reduce drag significantly. There's no questioning that. However, have you ever noticed how pro triathletes all seem to wear different styles of helmets? And no, I'm not just talking about brands here. I'm meaning that some wear long tail helmets. I mean, I look pretty mean, don't I? Whilst others choose to wear shorter, stubbier tail helmets. And of course, it's not just the pros either. We have a whole range and array within the age group ranks too. So what's the deal? Why is there even the option between long or short? And which is faster? Which is the best option for you? Okay, so I have two very clear examples here with me today. I've got the Met Coda Trunk on my head right now, which is a short tail helmet, but I also have the Met Drone, which is very similar, just a longer tail helmet. Now they both aim to do exactly the same thing, and that is to make you faster. So why the difference? Well, in short, one is better suited often to one riding style and make that rider faster, whilst the other is better suited to another style. So allow me to explain. See, the long tail aero helmet has this long, sleek, streamlined profile that is designed to almost sit snugly into your upper back, meaning that the air can stay attached to your body as long as possible and ultimately flow as smoothly as possible. So, that streamlined profile helps to reduce drag, meaning less resistance to your forward propulsion. However, to benefit from these aerodynamic advantages, it requires you to be able to hold such a position where the helmet is flush with your upper back or as close as possible. If there is a gap, well, that means that the airflow is disturbed, it creates turbulence and therefore can create drag. And secondly, if you start moving your head around with this long protruding tail, well, that can actually be more detrimental to your speed. And this is where this short tail helmet comes in. If you know that you're not able to hold that super tucked aero position for the long tail helmet to slot into your upper back, well, the short tail helmet may be the option for you. And typically, as is the case with the Kodo Tronco that I'm wearing now, whilst it has a shorter length and tail, they actually change the frontal profile to optimize it to improve the airflow over us and around our shoulders too. So these are all quite important things to consider and be wary of, particularly as we start to think about the event duration and distance. For instance, many of us might be able to hold a super tucked aero position for a 10 mile TT, but as the duration or distance increases, it's natural for many of us to want to adopt a slightly more relaxed and comfortable position. Let's be honest, how many of us are not moving our head at all, looking forward solely through a half or a full Ironman? Yeah, there's a pretty good argument for the short tail helmet. So far, I've done a pretty good job of convincing you on the short tail helmet, but actually personally, I prefer to wear the long tail aero helmet, along with many others, including some top pros. But should I? Hmm, well, I thought it's about time to actually call up an expert on this, someone that does a lot of testing with these helmets. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Matteo Tenney from Met today. Now, Matteo, very broadly speaking, We've got the short tail helmet, the Coda Trunker, and the long tail helmet, the drone. Who would the drone or a longer tail helmet suit? What kind of athletes and the position they ride, the events that they do? Okay, on top, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, well, the approach of the Coda Trunker and the drone is based on uh, a unique design. It's a wide body, let's say we keep the, the front part uh, wide enough to protect the shoulder from the direct impact of the airflow. Somehow we are decreasing the force that is keeping us as a stoppage in proceeding. Uh, then there is the, the other important feature that is the length of the, of the back tail. Uh, Drone was born to be the perfect helmet for a kind of uh, uh, athlete that is able to keep a very good position so the head, well, done into the, the shoulder shape in order to minimize the main drag area. That is the key factor in the formula to decrease the force needed to proceed at the wishes speed. Obviously, there are some compromises in choosing the long on the short tail, because the long tail is giving you the best if you are able to keep a stable position so not moving the head too much on the side, or if you need to drive the, the bike, moving yourself 
on, on the frame, probably we are close to have a valid choice with the Coda Tronca. It is uh, a little bit less extreme in the straight on position, so zero degree, absolutely aligning going on, but it's giving you a chance to save some VATs if you need to move on your frame. Everything is depending on the environment in which you are riding. We cannot compare uh, Giro d'Italia or Tour de France time trial against uh, an Ironman time trial or uh, maybe indoor in a truck. So you need to ride uh, turning on the truck. Okay, great. And then I, I, assuming that a rider has a very good aero position tucked down, do you have a potential saving in what's between the Coda Tronca and the drone, um, should they be riding on a perfectly flat course and keeping everything very aligned, how much would they save by using a longer tail helmet? We did simulation, we did, we did empiric simulation into the wind tunnel several times with our athletes. And uh, uh, indeed, if a rider is able to keep a very good condition and position, we are talking about uh, probably three to five watts setting in let's say straight on so perfectly aligned the angle in the side view let's just say this kind of a part of the helmet tail must sit against the, the back of the shoulder because if, it, if the tail is up it's straight but it's not effective so in good condition we are probably around that kind of value obviously we did the experience of using Drone and Coda Tronca, both in straight on position. And then we did angle position. So uh, in the wind tunnel, there was a platform that uh, was able to rotate during the test. And uh, this allowed to record different data in different angles. Uh, we can say that uh, Moving around uh, 5 to 10 degrees, we are starting to see the two curves, one from the drone and one from the Coda Tronca, they are crossing together, finding an intersection. That's to say, uh, the benefit given by the drone is uh, moving down at the point in which there is a, a different angle, so it's not no more straight. It's basically the simulation of transversal wind, for instance. This point, around 5 to 10 degrees, Coda Tronca is starting to gain and again and again to reverse the situation of the striton position. So that's the condition. Yeah, so presumably if you're doing a long distance race and you struggle to keep your head still, um, you could be losing you know, a handful of watts quite easily with a longer tail helmet if you're moving it around from side to side. Now, uh, obviously, you're talking about crosswinds as well there. So would you suggest a course like Kona, for instance, that is infamously windy? Um, perhaps a shorter tail helmet is better suited there? Probably yes, depending on the day, of course. Mm. If the, uh, the tail and crosswind is making a, a big job that, that day, probably makes sense to, to use the Coda Tronca. On the other hand, if you are riding on an almost dry uh, uh, road and uh, without uh, too much curvy or, or moved uh, uh, shape of the time trial, at that point, drone can be probably the best in the choice. Okay, so maybe going equipped with two helmets is the best answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks ever so much to the folk at Met for that, their insight, their expertise and the knowledge on that area. Hopefully you guys found that interesting. I certainly did. And you can see now I'm looking rather serious with my aero helmet on. And that is because I'm about to try and find out for myself whether the long tail helmet or the shorter tail helmet is fast. As I mentioned already, I prefer to use the longer tail helmet. So I'm hoping that is the quickest. Um, so I'm going to do two runs, eight kilometers in length on a relatively flat and smooth terrain. I'm going to hold the same power for both the runs, 250 watts, and see which helmet gives the fastest speed for the same power. <laughs> Three, two, one.
Let's go. Okay, there wasn't a huge difference there. And if I'm going to be honest, I wasn't expecting there to be a huge difference. However, I am pleased to say the long tail aero helmet was ever so slightly quicker for myself. And I guess if you extrapolate those differences out over a long duration or distance, well, that could be quite significant. I do obviously hold a relatively aero tuck position so I am quite pleased and relieved because I would always go for and opt for the long tail helmet personally. However, for many holding that super tuck aerodynamic position can be difficult or not possible at all and particularly over those longer duration events people start to move their head around more and that longer tail helmet the benefits from that can be totally negated by the almost drag effect from that tail poking out from side to side so i do think that the shorter tail stubbier helmet is probably the best all-rounder compromise for most people out there however i will throw in one little caveat or just food for thought really if you're opting for the shorter tail stubbier helm purely out of the fact that you like to move your head around during long distance events well perhaps you should work on that because actually that is still going to be drag regardless of it being a shorter tail helmet so yeah just think about that anyway i hope you guys have enjoyed today's video thank you ever so much to met for jumping in with their expertise if you enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up give it a like don't forget to give us a follow over on social media and give us a subscribe just down below